I believe we go to the moon, I believe we go to Mars. We have even studies where we think about a multi-generation starship, and that's not with human, that with robots. The official title is Head of Innovation and Ventures, and um, I'm since 16 years with the European Space Agency, started as a Head of Commercial Development of Human Spaceflight. This was the reason why I joined after Apple on my own startup company, is because I was uh, working with astronauts, that's pretty cool. And then I uh, always make the joke, and then three weeks later I realized where I ended up. And in the last 14 years I was working, building up the ecosystem for startups in Europe, uh, the technology transfer. So my role is, and especially this of my team and my colleagues, is to foster innovation, looking where we have technologies which we bring back to Earth on, and promote that. On the other side, where we have startups which using these technologies and creating new ventures, but also crazy startups, I was saying, and it's not so crazy, to building rockets and spaceships and, and satellites. So what we also can bring up to into orbit. First, I, when we're looking, uh, it's not only the European Space Agency, ESA, but uh, everything what we, the industry has done in space. Space is today the digital backbone or the backbone of the digital economy. Uh, if you navigate to this venue, you used your smartphone might be uh, with uh, the navigation device, when you're using maps, uh, when you use the weather forecast, when you're watching TV. This is also enabled by space technology. And uh, the, the new trend is not only the navigation, uh, the new trend which we see is the Earth observation. We get really live data from what our planet is doing and this is not only used in agriculture or, or banking business, but we also can spot uh, what is happening with our planet or if there's a leak uh, in the Mediterranean Sea and, and a ship is losing oil. But it's also for trading, so every ship has a transponder and I can tell you today how many container or how many gas or crude oil is on the ship and and that really drives the industry in space is I would always say just a camera with a higher static and uh, a lot of these data are just started to utilize the big programs in Europe are Copernicus uh, Galileo for, for navigation and in, in certain areas Europe is really leading and it's up to us to use that and of course I'm passionate about human space flight it's also about it's the smallest part yeah? but it's about building rockets and and maybe really helping people living offside this planet and uh, this was the reason why I'm joining ESA and I still believe that this is something which is great therefore we need more space from the technology side and the business model side but also more space in our mindset if we want to do new things you have to be open and uh, it's not only technology it's business and uh, business modeling and this is the reason why we supported in the last couple of uh, years over 750 startup companies doing crazy things uh, we're moving to 120 startups next year. We're building up an incubation center next to the, to the 20 incubation centers in 50 locations. Now next year also in Romania, where we want to support st 10 startups. And as I said, there are no crazy ones. They're only great dreams. Uh, we have already some startup companies not building rockets, but. Uh, uh, there's a uh, German company, PT Scientist, there's an Israeli startup company, iSpace, a Japanese company. Who will build the first fueling station on the moon? How you make the telecommunication and the 5G network on the moon? So I think this is it's about infrastructure and it's not only uh, the big corporates like uh, 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 Bezos uh, having this huge lander, it's next to the space agencies also small startup companies going that because when you want to colonize, when you go the next step, you have to bring the, the infrastructure next to it. It was the same when the first Pilgrims uh, researcher was going to North America. They had to build their infrastructure there. So instead of going to North America, which was a long ride, uh, the moon is much shorter. Yeah? Uh, the ride with the ship was a couple of weeks. We don't need a couple of weeks to, to go to the moon, it's much shorter. So therefore, it's not so far, far away from the time. We should not look to the kilometers. And uh, I am a strong believer uh, that Moon will be the next step. Uh, we'd go to Mars, we go further. Why we do that? It's not because we want to leave our planet, but this is our, in our DNA. It's especially Europeans, our researchers. If the people are saying, oh, don't climb on that mountain, you know what we will do? We climb on the mountain. If the people say, oh, there's nothing behind the forest, we walk through the forest because this curiosity drives us. 
and uh, technology helps us and, and now we are there so but I believe it's not only the the big millionaires or billionaires doing that it's also European startup companies and we have a handful of crazy young entrepreneur teams doing that because that's the next market And of course, uh, I'm an industrial engineer. And as I said, I worked for Apple in the tech company, my own startup company. So there are two rocket companies, ESA Aerospace. They're building a uh, up to one ton launcher. And they're sitting in Munich, great engineers. Uh, so they build a rocket, you know, and sorry, I'm an engineer, rocket size. Isn't it cool? Uh, PLD Space is a, is a Spanish company. They make a little bit smaller rocket. We have uh, Astrocast. Uh, we have uh, uh, part-time science or PT scientists. They make also moon lander. Um, we have uh, Deorbit and Clear Space is a Swiss company because they, there is a, a, a fleet of constellations of thousands of satellites and they say how we clean the orbit when the satellites are broken. So also these kind of technologies we have. We have even, and uh, this is my, uh, one of my favorite, uh, SatSearch, it's a small company you're seeing what are the components in, in the world and giving transparency. Uh, it, I would say it's not the eBay of, of uh, parts of space. Um, and the other company called HostMe, uh, which is, I would say, it's the Tinder for space payload. So where you can jump on another satellite. So also the platforms are going there. And the next year we will see a mass of companies uh, producing nanosites, services, uh, and, and really reshape that. A company which is very successful is Lilium Aviation. Uh, they started four years ago with the idea to build an electrical plane, five-seater, in Oberpfaffenhofen, that's close uh, to Munich. And there were five engineers, not a company yet. And, uh, and there were the discussion in the board because we selected them in our incubation program. And some people said, oh, Frank, but they want to do competition to Airbus. And then I said to the colleagues, if we do not support them, who else does? Our job is to help the young ones. Our job is like the fathers and mothers or uncles when your kids are the first time on the bicycle. They say, don't worry, I'll help you. You will not fall hard, you will fall soft because I'm there. Giving this helping hand is for entrepreneurs and tech startups super early in the first phase. Later the VC is concerned. So Lilium had just last week the first test flight. They raised over 103 million. It's a European startup, it's not US. And there are 300 people now and they make it real. So this is what I really like. A lot of people said it's not possible, but they made possible. So what I really like with all of the startup is the heart. And I said that positive ignorance to ignore the barriers, to climb over and say, we still do it. And our job is to help these companies. Uh, over the last 14 years, we have built the biggest ecosystem worldwide for space-related startups. And we're very proud because it's not in the US, it's not somewhere else. We will open most likely the first dépendance uh, with the Singapore government. Uh, in the, uh, this year with Singapore, we have requests from all over the world because, and this is one of the advantages of Europe, it's us built on cooperation. We have 22 member states and the people trust us. I always say we are the uncle with a little bit of money in the pocket and the right address book. And, and we are not only helping for just a project like a, some organizations doing. It's, it's like a family. Uh, we support our startups for two years and we have idea competitions which we support before. But also after that, you're part of the family. And I just had yesterday a question of companies which need helping in financing. ESA has a budget of 6.3 billion euros per year and 90% goes to industry. Our job is to make the best out of this investment in Europe and bring in new labor and bring in new technology into Europe. And I think we have great universities. Also here in Romania, you have great entrepreneurs. You use, you have, we have to use these advantages. And, uh, and we have to keep our people here in Europe and giving the right place that they can grow their startup companies there. And therefore, this uncle in the first stage where you're not so fit on your bike is so crucial. And this is the job and it's a super small investment, but uh, it really pays off. Uh, I think uh, the last years we, we invested into this program around 18 million. In the same time, we got 400 million co-investment of VCs. And I think that's a pretty good ratio. Not talking about uh, taxpayers, uh, tax return, employees, and so on. So our job is to make the, the small plant and let it grow to an oak, which is good against any storm.
I, I think um, going with the vision of our Director General, uh, Professor Jan Werner, is I, I think the idea of a moon village is good. Because uh, if you're running out of bread, you don't build a bakery, you go to the baker. So, uh, and I'm, a, as I said, a business person. I think collectivity, it's much better. And then I would even say it does not matter who is the first, who is the smartest, that is the difference. Who makes a business out of it? Who sells, okay, the power plant on the moon, how it can refinance it? Yeah, do I have to have cryptocurrency? Whatever I have to do, I have to make a business out of it. We do not do, these companies are not doing exploration to come poor. They want to make money out of it. So therefore it's important to see it might be the, one of the big, big billionaires being the first or our agency, but who makes a sustainable business out of that? That's the question. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. My, my, my first hero was a Lego astronaut and uh, Star Wars. It's always the question about Star Wars and Star Trek. I think the future is more Star Wars because things are dirty and not really working in Star Trek. Yeah, it's, you need a hydro drive, screwdriver to fix this stuff, you know, the things you have to bump that it's working. So I think that's maybe, maybe the truth. And when you're looking to the International Space Station, one restroom, you know, no shower. So it reminds me more to, than Star Wars than Star Trek at the moment. I believe we go to the moon, I believe we go to Mars. We have even studies where we think about a multi-generation starship, and that's not with human, that's with robot. And it's the takes the idea of termites. Termites do not have a blueprint when they make a termite hill, but it lasts for 100 years. Right? They recently they found the termite hill, which I think was two, 300 years old. So what happens if you have small nanobots and send them to an asteroid with the programming to make out of this asteroid a spaceship over the next three, 400 years? while traveling through the universe. So I think when you take your business model and you look more than one generation, what happens to it? We always have the tendency to look until from 30 to 70. What happens when we think three, four generations? And a lot of people say that, ah, oh, but that's not possible. And then I say, every farmer who has a forest is doing that. Because when you plant a tree, it's your grandkids who is doing the harvesting. What happens to colonization when we think about three generations? And I think then you get the answer, we will leave Earth, not because we want to kill it, because we want to protect it, and we are a researcher. We don't accept that there is an end of the frontier, we always want to go further. And uh, therefore I think the plan A is Earth and the plan B might be Mars and we should always protect plan A, our Earth, because it's the most valuable, nicest things which you can get in the universe. Hit that subscribe button and check out our YouTube channel for more content like this. You can also check techthelead.com for all the best and the latest tech news.